Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So we've got a new version of Gold 10 version 2.4 B18 just released. Previously, we were running Gold 10 version 2.4 B17.3. So a new version of Gold 10 that released earlier today. And this version is mainly focused on stability according to Sistro and also adding support for other firmwares. But there are some new features that have also been added that we will take a look at. So as you can see here, 10.50, 10.70 and 10.71 have been added. Previously, we did not have support for those firmwares. So if you were on those firmwares, you'd be running Echo Stretch's Hen VTX instead, which is basically a port of the original Hen, which allows you to run PS4 fake packages and homebrew. But it unfortunately does not have all of the additional features that Gold Hen provides. So if you are on 10.50, 10.70 or 10.71, you can now get the full Gold Hen experience now running on your PS4. So that is one big improvement that has been added, support for those new firmwares. Now, another thing is rest mode support. I think this was the primary focus of this version for stability because there were issues with the previous versions when going into rest mode and recovering from rest mode, you would run into issues where it might crash or you would recover from rest mode and Gold 10 would not relaunch properly. You would run into issues. So that is the, I guess, primary focus of this version was improving stability, especially when recovering from rest mode. And it looks like there has been a discovery made that there may be some homebrew apps that also still cause issues with rest mode, even with this new version. So if we scroll up here, we can see in the known issues section. So we can see that applications such as Apollo, Items Flow and the Orbis Toolbox may cause the PS4 to crash slash malfunction during entering slash exiting rest mode. So if you run any of these applications before entering rest mode, you may still have issues trying to recover from rest mode. And this could be an issue that perhaps the homebrew developers behind these applications might be able to address so that that no longer becomes an issue. But for now, you're not going to want to run these applications if you are using rest mode on your PS4 with Gold 10, because otherwise you might run into issues trying to recover or enter rest mode. So anyway, those are the main improvements there. We've also got a new cheat downloader added. And this might be something to do with the fact that these homebrew apps are causing issues. Like when you go into the PS4 Cheats Manager to update the cheats or the patches or the plugins, it doesn't list the PS4 Cheats Manager or Gold 10 Cheats Manager in this list. So perhaps that's not an issue, but it does seem strange as to why they would add this feature to be able to download cheats directly from Gold 10 without having to use a homebrew app to update the cheats. I feel like that might be to mitigate the rest mode issue, but then you know, the actual application that actually downloads the cheats is not included in this list anyway. So perhaps not. But either way, it's nice to have the ability to download the cheats directly integrated into the Gold 10 menu. And we'll be taking a look at that a little bit later on. We also have fixed network servers configuration save. So an issue with that, probably saving the settings for the bin loader or FTP server. And we also have a moved Klog server to user land for better network disconnection support. I remember there being an issue with the previous version with the Klog server after a disconnect and reconnect, the Klog server would not recover. So perhaps this is to, you know, provide better stability and, and solve those issues. So yeah, those are the main updates that have been added. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually get this up and running on your PS4. Obviously, if you are on one of the older jailbreaks, you don't have to do anything. You just wait for your WebKit exploits to be updated with the new version. You can select it and it will run that version. Perfect. But obviously for everyone else who's on the PP Pwn exploit, uh, you're going to have to update it using a USB drive. So you're going to want to connect up a USB drive to your computer, download the new goldhen.bin file, extract the goldhen.bin file to the root of the USB drive, making sure that USB drive is formatted in either XFAT or FAT32 format. Then you can plug it in to your PS4 and then run the PP Pwn exploit using whatever method you normally use. Load it through the computer, Raspberry Pi, Luckfox Pico, the Chinese Pwn devices that you can buy on AliExpress, an LG TV, a router, a Japanese toilet, whatever it is you run it on, uh, go ahead and run the exploit and get it up and running. And then once it loads, it should transfer that new version of Gold 10 to the hard drive so that you'll no longer need to run uh, the exploit with the USB drive plugged in to load the new version next time. You only have to do this the first time when you are updating to a new version of Gold 10. So that will get the new version up and running on your machine. So now we can take a look at some of the actual improvements that have been added uh, in this new version. So the main change besides the stability improvements and the, of course, support for these other firmwares is the fact that if we go into the cheat settings, we now have three new options. We have update the cheat archive. We've also got the cheat source, uh, where you can switch it from downloading from the internet or installing from a USB or hard drive. 
And then we have the cheat selection, which is on all cheats, but you can also change that to only install cheats for the games that you have installed. So that way you're not downloading, you know, potentially hundreds or thousands of cheat files for games that you don't actually own. You can just select it so it only downloads the cheats for the games you actually have installed, uh, which you might prefer. So those are the changes. So if we select the option to update cheat archive by default, it's going to check the internet. Obviously, you need to be connected to the internet for this. It will check to make sure that the current archive that you have on your PS4 is up to date. If it's not up to date and there's a newer version with more cheats available or updated cheats, it will then download those from the internet, extract those onto your PS4, and you'll have all of the latest cheats installed. So it's basically replacing the need to use Homebrew like the PS4 Cheats Manager to update the cheats. Now, you will still need to use the PS4 Cheats Manager or Gold Hen Cheats Manager to actually download the patches and the latest plugins because this feature is only for cheats right now uh, in the menu. It kind of makes sense why it's only cheats because yeah, cheats tend to get updated a lot more often than patches and particularly plugins do. So, you know, having to launch the homebrew every time you want to update the cheats archive, having to launch and wait for it to load up and going through the homebrew app to update the cheats and then exit, it takes a lot longer than just hopping into this menu and selecting this one option. And again, I do like the fact that you can just choose to install cheats for the games that you have installed and ignore the rest. That is also a nice feature. So also you can install, of course, from a USB or a hard drive. So if you do not have internet on your PS4 and you specifically keep your PS4 offline, you can still install the cheats from the USB or the hard drive. So if you're installing from the hard drive, you're going to want to make sure that the FTP server is running, of course. And then all you have to do is open up an FTP client on your computer or phone or whatever device you're using. And then you're just going to enter the IP address of the PS4 in the host box. 2121 is the port. Connect up to your PS4 over the network with FTP. And then you just go into the data folder, the gold hen folder. You'll see this new update folder in uppercase characters. If you go inside there, that's where you're going to want to put the cheats. So you just download the latest cheats from the gold hen cheat repository uh, GitHub repo. You just download the zip file there, drag it over to that folder on your PS4, and then just rename the zip file so it's called cheats.zip. And that's all you got to do. Once that's done, you can go ahead and select the cheat source in the settings and switch it over to HDD, and then select the option to update the cheats archive, and it will install all of the latest cheats from that archive that you copied uh, to the hard drive. So that's all you got to do there. And it's basically the same process if you're installing from a USB drive. You just create the update folder on the root of your USB drive. You copy the zip file inside. You rename it to cheats.zip, plug it into your PS4, change the cheat source to the USB, and then update the cheat archive to get the latest cheats. So yeah, that is the improvement that's been made in this version. I know it's been a long time that we've been waiting for a new Gold Hen update. Some people might be upset that there's not more features added here, but I think a lot of people were more interested in stability than new features at this point. Gold Hen already has a ton of features and a lot of people were struggling with stability. So that's clearly where most of the attention has been focused on. And I think that is correct, that most of the attention was focused on improving stability before trying to add additional features. Um, but still, this cheat archive feature is a nice feature to have included. And of course, additional firmware is now supported is great for the people who weren't able to access Gold Hen until now. There might be a hotfix update that comes out after this because typically what happens is you know, a Gold Hen version comes out, you know, there's, there are testers that are testing things, but you can never catch everything. So once it goes out into public, somebody will find a bug or something or some issue and Sistro will fix it and then release a new version that might be B19 or B18.1, B18.2, something like that. So don't be surprised if there's a slightly newer, higher version out soon. I probably won't make a video on it unless it actually adds new features. It'll most likely be a bug fix update if we do see something like that release uh, very soon. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.